In order to export into Mudbox, you have to have um, every object you need. Whatever object you bring into Mudbox has to be you need. Um, the seams don't matter so much, um, but they do still have to be you need. Um, so each object here is you need, and it's also if you look at my outliner. Everything is in its own group. Every object is named. Okay. Uh, nice and clean. So this is outside. Well, the numbers are a little off, but each each one has a name. It's because this has been through a couple versions. But um, so each object's named. Every object is UV'd. So we're ready to export into Mudbox. So I'm going to select all the objects, go to File, Export Selection, I want OBJ, and I'm going to actually do this one. I'm going to overwrite my existing one. Um, it's Tutorial, name the Tutorial Table Export OBJ. So I want to export the selection. Um, go into Mudbox, and go File import tutorial table export open so right away um, I'm gonna start sculpting first but right away each material or each object sorry has the same material so if I uh, when I start painting you're gonna see that whatever I apply to one object it's going to apply to every other object so this is not what you want right you want to be able to paint on each object separately so um, whatever object you're working on you need to create a new material so I'm going to start working on this object here I'm going to delete this layer um, this is the outside three object so you can right click and isolate if you'd like um, I'm gonna name it I'm gonna create a new material I'm gonna name the material table outside three mat and then if I unisolate I can click off paint if I start painting It'll only affect this object now because it has a new material. Okay, um, so I'm going to delete that paint layer again. So I'm going to isolate this guy again. Let's just right-click, isolate. Um, I'm going to paint or sculpt the uh, wooden texture onto my object. So I'm going to create a new layer before I actually uh, paint the wooden texture. I'm going to um, subdivide my object go all the way up to six um, press W for wireframe you can see how many polygons we have um, and you know what I'm actually going to make a base layer first and we can kind of um, start warping this guy a little bit um, just around the edges so I'm just going to take my grab tool and just kind of move some of these edges in have the wood be a little warped just a tad pretty good so now that that's done I'm going to create another layer and this is going to be called wooden texture so I'm going to use a stencil for this one and in I believe it's already in mud box yeah it's in the mud box um, presets already so I'm going to take this stencil and just sculpt the detail onto the object. So 
Um, I'm going to take my sculpt tool and I have it at something like uh, I have it at a 0.5. Um, I found that that's a pretty nice value. Um, but you can definitely experiment uh, depending on the scale of your object. Um, this this value can change, so not one value can uh, should work for every single object. So you kind of gotta see for yourself. But um, so if I hold S and left click, I can rotate um, the stencil around, and if I hold S and also middle mouse click, I can move it around, and if I hold S and hold the right click uh, button I can zoom in and out so that's kind of nice control so I like this one and maybe I'll... Uh, that's fine that's fine for now so I'll just zoom out a little and that should be good all right, so I have my sculpt tool, got my stencil placed. Now I can just start sculpting. I'm gonna make my brush a little smaller so I don't sculpt around the side, but I can just start sculpting. I also have um, Steady Stroke on. You don't need to have that on, but Steady Stroke is in the, um, the sculpt brush uh, properties. Um, if you check it on, it'll kind of assist the movement of your um, of your mouse kind of give you a little more control um, I don't necessarily need that right now Oops. so I'm going to turn that off and just start brushing that in freehand and turn wireframe off Alright, that's one side. Now I gotta go I'll do the other side. And you don't have to use the same part of the stencil, so I'm gonna um gonna move my stencil around again, holding S and middle mouse clicking. Maybe I like that one. Just start brushing it in with the sculpt tool. I'm going to flip this around, rotate my um, stencil, and if you get confused um, on how to rotate and move the stencil around, the controls are right on the bottom left here. So if you hold S, middle mouse, you can move this guy around. So I'm going to make my brush a little smaller that in okay rotate this around brush this in make sure I get all the edges around brush this in okay got a hill I gotta get this side there we are maybe I like this one that in okay, if I turn this guy off we can start to see our texture looks pretty decent just uh, 
rotate around, make sure none of your sculpting is, is warped or stretched for any reason. There we go. So now that's all done. Um, I'm going to paint. So let's go to my paint tool, paint layers, create a new paint layer called base. And I'm going to go to my paintbrush, choose color, go for something wooden, brown. Uh, not too saturated. That looks good. And I'm going to flood this. Okay. Um, Let's make it a little lighter, actually. Yeah. Flood. Okay, so now I'm going to start painting in some more detail. Um, I'm going to be a little rough just to just to get this going, but I'm going to make a new layer. And I'll call it detail. And I'm going to use this um, tile bark stencil here just to get some this nice detail and I'm actually going to use the projection and then there's some color here but I want to use a blending mode probably um, luminosity um, but you can try overlay multiply whatever um, I found that luminosity works good with this one um, so I'm going to use my projection Brush. Just start painting. Just to get some more detail on there. So if you do paint on the sides, there's a good chance the paint texture, whatever you're projecting, is going to be smeared on the sides. So you just got to check for that. Rotate this. So you don't want your brush to be too big. Um, but you can orient your brush to the surface. That might help a little bit. So that when you move your brush, it kind of follows the curve of the surface. So just get all the sides. Okay. This takes time. It's a little relaxing, but it definitely takes time. Especially if you have, uh, if you modeled all the um, part of the table um, but the good news is um, if you plan out your still life you'll know what parts are actually shown so there's a good chance you don't actually have to texture every single part of your model um, you can see if I turn my stencil off that um, this side got these sides got hit by um, when I was painting from here so if you go over the edge, it kind of stretches on these sides. So you just got to watch out for that. So I'm turn my stencil back on. Just make sure my brush is too big. Paint that in.
sides. Alright, looks like I got all the sides. Nothing stretched or smeared. Good. So I did, I put that blending mode on there. You can change the opacity if you'd like. So I might turn that down a little just to make it more subtle. Just like that. And you can use the um, the maps that we create for this uh, for the paint layer as um, additional bump, uh, which is nice. So I might end up doing that too. Uh, so this one looks good to go. So I'm going to start exporting the normals and the displacement and the um, color map. So first I'll do the color map. I just go right click, export channel merged. I'm going to go into our tutorial still life source images. I'm going to call this, um, I might be able to do it as a, I'm going to save it as a TIFF. Um, and I want to call it um, table outside three color. So I'm going to have a color map for each object that is visible in my still life scene. So this is the outside three object. Save. So I got my color map. I'm going to export displacement and normals. So I'm going to do a normal map. I'm going to call this guy normals. And you can save these um, extraction methods so that when you open it again, um, you don't have to start everything from scratch. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and select this object, add selected, add selected. You can see that the target model um, automatically picks the level 0 version of your object, and then the source model automatically picks the level 6 version of your object. I'm going to switch this guy to subdivision. Um, for the normals, I'm going to make a 2K map, 2 times anti-aliasing, tangent, for normals, this is good. Texture is fine. Uh, go 16 bit. Let's see if I can get more infor information in my image. Um, and I will save this into my source images as a TIFF. And I'll call it. Called, uh, norm and I don't really need that and just hit extract okay now I'm going to do my normal map or displacement map sorry new operation displacement call it disp gonna add selected add selected Subdivision. I'm going to need a 4K map for this for displacement. Um, anti aliasing. I'm going to do a 32 bit EXR. Don't need that. Uh, everything else looks good. Pick my folder. Tutorial source images. 32 bit EXR. I'll call that table. Outside three disp and then extract. Cool. So everything worked out fine, hopefully. Um, and because we um, sculpted our object, we're gonna have to export um, the model back into Maya. So let's just click off of this. Um, I'm gonna bring my subdivisions back down to zero and select my object go to file export selection go to tutorial still life scenes um, I'm actually going to yeah that's fine uh, yeah that's fine um, Gonna make a new folder in here called Sculpt uh, Exports, and I'm gonna call this um, 
I think this can be an OBJ. Uh, I'm going to call this um, table outside three sculpt export. Okay, so now I can go back into Maya. And this is this object, I believe, right? No, it's this one. Okay. So this is what I'm going to be replacing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit, uh, I'm going to hide that for now. And import my sculpt tutorial still life scenes. So here's my guy. Um, um, so you can see that um, when you sculpt, your new object might become a little thicker, it might intersect with new geometry, so you just have to keep that in mind. Um, so I'll just move that out a little bit. And I'm going to end up uh, having to sculpt this one out a little bit to kind of um, fix some of those gaps there. Um, but so I'm going to create a new material for this. I'll call it table outside three mat. I'm going to change this to about one point three. I'm going to import my color map into the color channel, my base, and color, open, cool, so that looks good, um, now I'm going to put in my Normal map to my bump channel. Go to file. Change this to tangent. Bring in my file. Okay. Change my color space to raw for normals. You can double click that to see if it's showing up. Cool. Um, we also need to uncheck flip RNG in the bump node and then I need to bring in my displacement you hit that um, hit this tab here get to your displacement material file this XR Cool. So it'll autom automatically change the raw. I don't know if that's necessarily correct, um, but I might change that to sRGB. Let's see how that works. Um, and remember, you can't really uh, tell if anything's working if you don't have lights um, in the scene. So right now, if I do my IPR render. I shouldn't see anything, but uh, I just created a sky dome light and a little plane in order for me to see what I've done. Cool. So it looks pretty similar to uh, to what we made in Mudbox, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so yeah, you. Uh, just repeat that process for each part of the table um, and then you want to save this out as a new version and then save as again as table reference Okay. 
And now we want to create our still life scene. Save this. Uh, I'm just going to save this. Still life master. I want to reference in my table. Where is it? Hmm, I don't know where I saved. Okay, I couldn't see it, so I'm gonna go back. Ah, I saved it in sculpt exports by accident. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move that. This I'll move into scenes. And this and this one move into scenes. So you have to make sure um, your scenes are where they need to be. So going to create reference table reference reference. So you can't see it right away just because my table is um, model to scale and my grid is in centimeters, so you kind of have to zoom out. 